Hello, hello everyone, and welcome, welcome. <laughs> My name is Alex Cooper, and welcome to our Thanksgiving Day themed Let's Make a Turkey Feather Catch Game class. <laughs> Let me introduce myself if you haven't been in one of my classes before. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also the Ucha Creek, now Grove Town Library with our new building and everything. So yay, yay. <laughs> so well, glad that you're, very glad that you're here with me today. Gobble, gobble, that's right. Hey, Mac, how are you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Gobble Gobble Thanksgiving is on the 26th, so I hope everybody's kind of getting excited and everything. So welcome to class, everybody. As you come into the classroom and stuff, feel free to kind of post any questions that you have in the chat and everything, and I'd be happy to answer them anyway. It may take me, a, there's a little bit of delay between the the chat on here, so just realize it may take me a minute to answer. But I always start class with a, how can I help, okay? And it looks like I've got a little bit of the, the window shining on me there, so get a little sunlight from outside, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Uh, so very glad that you're here with me today. How can I help, what questions do you have? Uh, what kind of projects and stuff do you have coming up? So as folks are kind of coming into the classroom and everything, I'll kind of tell you about some of our other classes that we have coming up. And of course, classes we've done throughout this month and everything. So happy Tuesday. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Thank It's November, of course. So today is the 17th, okay? Tomorrow's the 18th. Tomorrow, help, um, help. <laughs> Tomorrow, join me for Thanksgiving Day Scratch. Another Thanksgiving Day theme class, let's draw and animate a turkey. So as long as, as we kind of go along with our scratch journey, with every new project that we do, we kind of move a little bit further ahead, more into scratch. But of course, it's for beginners as well. So you can come right in, kind of follow along with me, and we'll all be on the same page. So tomorrow is let's draw and animate a turkey. So we're going to be drawing a turkey from hand using the vector um, uh, graphics uh, uh, well. I'm not sure exactly what you call that. I know we're dealing with vectors, so it's a little bit less than just hand drawing stuff on there. So that's kind of our plan tomorrow. We're gonna make a, a turkey, animate it, add sound effects to it, all kinds of fun stuff like that. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're gonna be doing at 2.30, uh, internet shopping and digital couponing. We'll be talking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, how to find great deals out there and stuff. And also we'll finish up by talking about digital coupons and stuff and some places you can get free shipping and also see what where the daily deals are and everything. So that's a great class uh, to come to. And then on the 19th at 11 o'clock, we'll be doing this class again. Let's make a turkey feather catch game. The really fun thing is every time I do a hands-on class like this, it improves. So anytime you do see one of the classes, maybe it seems like a double, but you can always come join me for the latest one. And of course, the best part is if you come to a class. I know a lot of folks are watching these um, as replays, but if you come to one of the live classes, then of course you can actually ask questions as we do our projects together. And then, to, then uh, Thursday afternoon, we'll be doing holiday gift and uh, holiday gadget and gift ideas. So come join me for that, okay? So we'll talk about internet shopping and then we'll talk about things to look for. And then next week, we're gonna be doing things like eBay and Facebook Marketplace, internet buying and selling. And then we'll do, be doing our, 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 let's make a turkey feather catch game on the 25th. And then on the 25th afternoon, we'll be doing let's draw and animate a turkey. And that will do that. That'll do it for us uh, for this month. So only two days of classes next week. So we do our classes on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Thanksgiving is on a Thursday. So we'll be taking that day off, of course, to give thanks and all that kind of good stuff. Just a little side note, if you are looking for ebooks and free ebooks and free audiobooks and you have your library card, we've switched over to RB Digital. You can download the Libby app uh, on the app store the big thing is to kind of when it says what's your library just answer greater clarks hill regional library system and then choose georgia download destinations and then enter your library card very excited i was actually down i was able to download a new short story uh collection uh last night and i was listening to some of it and it was really really fun that was available there on libby so 
It's great. It's fantastic. All you need is your library card. If you need a library card, contact the library and come into the library. Or you can call into the library or contact us through Facebook. Yes, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. For details, you can go to gchrl.org. Or you can call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now, we're doing our subscribe drive. So we can, if we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, then we can get our own custom YouTube address. So if you're not, if, we, if um, or, let me say the word or, or if you're looking for our YouTube channel, the easiest way to find it is go to YouTube, search for GCHRL videos, and it'll pop right up because that's the name of our channel. All right, so let's go back here. So we're doing our thing. Let's uh, make a turkey feather catch game. So this is our first time, of course, doing this class. So it'll be kind of fun. We'll kind of learn together a little bit, okay? So the, the big thing is I'm going to put the, the handout in our chat there. So does anybody have any questions kind of before we get started? <laughs> any questions? All right, so it's uploading. I'm going to give it one second there. This is going to be a pretty fun class. All right, it's uploading it. Now I'll get to post it. The big thing is I talk about is and one thing is maybe to have me on a separate device, uh, our video, or have us live and stuff. And then you can kind of follow along, maybe on the big computer, of course. All right, so I'm going to post it. All right, so do you want to down, download the handout or kind of follow along with me? Of course, it's right there. Oh, didn't realize I didn't have that on yet. So hello, hello, <laughs> once again. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and I'll open up our handout here. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I gotta get the right one. There it is. Boop. All right, so let me zoom in here. No. All right, so let's make a turkey feather catch game. Now, we did a bunch of Halloween stuff too, so if you look back on our channel, of course, in October and everything, you'll get to see a whole bunch of those. So we did like a dance party, so we want to do something a little bit different. We did a different, um, uh, which kind of game did we do? We did like a uh, the, the ghosts jump out and we click those and stuff, kind of ghost game. So we want to do something a little bit different. So this is kind of like a uh, Space Invaders, but we're not shooting back, we're trying to catch uh, the feathers is kind of our goal here. So let's go ahead and let's talk about scratch a little bit because we are, we do know that we may have some beginner folks here that are just kind of looking for a kind of a new project to work on. So I'll kind of go over scratch a little bit. I'll show a quick little video of what you can kind of some ideas of what you can do with scratch and then we'll talk about logging in and everything. So let's kind of, we'll talk about an overview of our class here. So we'll talk about what is scratch. Okay. And everything we talk about today will be completely free, of course. We'll talk about signing up, logging in. You don't have to log in today. The only reason you may want to sign up or log in is so that you can save your projects. And uh, the only thing you need is an email address for that. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can do everything we do today without logging in or setting up an account or anything like that. We'll talk about Scratch. We'll talk about saving our project. And we'll also talk about program overview and we'll do like a little bit of a basic tutorial talking about using Scratch, okay? And then we'll do our turkey feather catch game, okay? And we'll talk about some resources. And before we get started, any questions or anything? 
All right, so I'm going to disappear so that I'm not blocking anything. Let's talk about what is Scratch and what can I do with it, okay? So Scratch is a programming language and it has an online community. It does have a download. You could download the software directly to your computer if you wanted to, but you can just use it on the website, which, which what we'll, that is what we'll be doing today. Uh, you can create your own interactive stories, games, animations, and share your creations with others from around the world. Uh, in this process of designing programming scratch projects, you learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively. I'd say it's something kind of for all ages. It kind of gets your brain starting to think um, the a way of kind of computer programming. Okay. So the big question is people ask, how much does Scratch cost? Scratch is completely free. Don't need a license or anything like that. Scratch will always be free. Another part of it is because it is an open source language, uh, could you possibly sell your projects? Believe it or not, yes, you could. Believe you can if you wanted to. Uh, so we'll learn more about Scratch a little bit. So let me show uh, this little video. It kind of does an overview, a lot of this, uh, a lot of the projects and stuff, and kind of give you a good general idea. <laughs> All right, so let me pull this over here. Let me turn my sound down here. There we go. All right. Okay, so that video gives you a really brief kind of overview of kind of uh, projects you can work on, ideas and stuff. So let's go ahead and let's go to our next page here. Let's talk about getting started, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to scratch.mit.edu. Of course, now I have that song in my mind. Do, 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 do. All right, so the big thing is, like I said, you anything we do today, you don't have to set up an account if you don't want to. I have an account set up so that I can save my projects and stuff. It does require an email uh, uh, address uh, to be able to set that up. It's a free account. They don't send any newsletters or anything like that, which is great. That's all it is is just to set it up, and this is through MIT. So basically, once you get set up and everything, we're going to the website. Let's go up here and let's click where it says create. Later on, we'll talk about some of our other projects and stuff that may be listed on here. Uh, lots of fun animations, stories, games, and they're all completely free on here too. And like when, if you make a, pro, a, a, a game or a project or whatever, you can share it. And then the cool part about it is other people can look at it and even do a remix on it too. And you can do that with other projects as well. So let's hit create. It looks like mine is already logged in, so it's showing my username. So if you want to do that, you go up there and you click where it says, I think I can do it here too, you know, under file. Anyway, it'll say something like login, and that's where you create your login and stuff if you wanted to save your projects, okay? And then you give your project a name, and then you can hit file and save now, and it'll save it. So when you come back in, log back in, and your project has been saved, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Let's do a little bit of a brief program overview here. Number one is our 
uh, stage area, which is this. This is where we see our characters. It always loads up with uh, Scratch the Cat, which is kind of like their mascot. Uh, first, over here on the right side, we also, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Over here on the right side, you can move the things around, but I, I just kind of keep it the way the default is, of course. Okay, so number one, um, one more is our stage. That's where we see our characters, our graphics and stuff, okay? We also have our backdrop. This is our section here. We Right now it's white. This is where we click and we change our background colors. In a minute for our project, we're actually gonna load up a pre-made one because it has graphics in it that don't come with um, Scratch. But the really cool part about it is the other uh, projects that we've used. All you would do is click here and then uh, like where the cat is and you can see all the different sprites that uh, come with Scratch or background pictures and even sounds and stuff. It has a really, really nice, fun library to kind of get you started. Okay, so we also have our sprites. It's kind of this area here. So the only sprite that we have loaded in, in this is our cat, okay? We also have our work area. Work area right here, which is number four, and that's where our code goes, okay? You can zoom in and zoom out for our code. So the big thing is we have our blocks. They're like Legos. Only the codes that will work go together, okay? So you can't take certain codes and try to put them together. If they don't go together, then that means that code doesn't work together. So instead of us having to remember a whole bunch of code right now, all we have to do is just kind of identify the blocks, okay? So we have our work area. We also have our blocks, and then we have our control buttons on the, the top right. This is usually the way we start a project. We hit the green flag, we hit the stop flag, and one of the things we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to set up, we're going to be using um, a way that it actually has a, will have a start button that we click to, okay? So let's talk about using our blocks. The good part about the blocks on the left side is that you can just keep scrolling. So if you're not, there are color coordinated, tries to be in categories. Um, if you can't find a block, the good part is you can just keep continuing to scroll up and down and eventually you'll find your block that you're looking for, okay? Uh, their categories are motion, look, sound, data, events, sensing, all kinds of good stuff. Now, I just kind of have this because like I said, every time we do, um, one of these uh, new one of these projects what we try to do is we try to add a little bit more add a little bit further um, because our projects change so we need to learn some new things so one of the things is today we're going to be making three variables okay our variables today will be talking about a countdown clock it's going to keep score and it'll keep a, a number of how it'll keep count of how many feathers we actually catch okay We also have, a, we're gonna use something called a broadcast. Basically what the broadcast does is allows us to make, instead of using the flag, because the flag is great, but we may want the background to change and it also say game over at the end and switch our backgrounds. So we use broadcast, which allows us to do that for more than one script on each little section, okay? So just kind of know that when I start talking about broadcast and I have a whole wiki here talking about how broadcast works. So if you wanna use that in one of your projects. The other thing we're also gonna be using today is when we talk about cloning. So when our feathers come down, we want the feathers to keep coming, don't we? Well, we're, they'll actually be making clones of themselves. And once they reach the bottom, either the turkey catches them or it misses them. And when it misses them, then the feathers need to disappear, but we need more to become at the top. So it's gonna keep cloning, making copies of itself so it just continuously keeps falling from the ceiling. So that's a new thing we're gonna to learn today is about cloning. The other thing we're gonna learn about, and I have um, in the past, I actually just kind of talked about this, maybe shown this, but I actually have set up a graph to get us started. So when we're actually putting our graphics or our sprites on the screen, we actually have coordinates. Now these are like math coordinates like in geography, not geography, but uh, geometry or something. And it actually sets it up so any X or Y, positive or negative, where we put our graphic, it'll actually calculate it for us. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Calculate it for us automatically. 
but if we do need to put in the numbers minus or negative, just know that they go in different areas, okay? So here's our X, and here's the Y, all right? All right, so what we're gonna make is our project, our turkey feather catch game, okay? So with our keyboard, we're actually gonna be moving our turkey back and forth, left and right, and then as the feathers fall, here they go, falling from the ceiling area, we'll actually catch them, and there we go. So it's gonna keep score. It's also gonna keep score about how many we missed. And the big thing is, how does when does the game end? Well, the game ends when our timer is up, okay? So we have actually two pre-made sections here. This is a starter project here. So we're gonna go here which the graphics are already loaded. And they'll also have a final project as well that's located here too. This project was actually created by uh, Jeff, the STEM teacher. This is his. You, this is a, a YouTube link to his uh, video about this. Really fun, great idea. Put it together really well. So that really get, get really giving him pro, um, props for um, creating this project that we're working on today. So let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is let's let's go to this address. Easiest thing to do is do a copy paste. So I'm going to go ahead and open another tab and then paste my project right there. Now this is kind of the share mode. So when we look at a project, this is kind of how where we play uh, the project. And it's loading. Got to give it a minute. <laughs> All right, as you can see right now, nothing happens. Nothing happens because there's no code. This is just for the pictures and sprites and sounds and stuff. So let's go ahead and let's click where it says see inside. And then it'll bring it up. And now it already has our graphics loaded. We are actually have our sounds loaded and every, everything. So let's kind of look around some. So since this is something that's already loaded, we don't have our scratch the cat on there. So how do we look and see there's no code loaded yet? There's our turkey. If we click our turkey and we click where it says sounds, there actually is a sound already loaded with our turkey. <laughs> so the idea is when our turkey, um, the feather is caught by the turkey, then the turkey makes a noise, okay? If we click costumes, there's only one costume turkey in our Create drawing a turkey. What we'll do is we'll actually use our vectors to create feathers and everything for our turkey. We'll be doing that tomorrow. We go back to our code tab and we can see all our blocks here on our left side. And it has the different categories. Of course, we can keep scrolling down if we want to. All right, so. Uh, before we get started, let's just do the classic uh, project here. Oh, well, let's keep looking around here. So look, we have our, our feather over here. So if we left click our feather, we'll see that it comes up. And it, there's no picture of the feather right there because it's actually been set for us not to see it. Okay. And see, we can turn it on and off. This is our show section. One of the things is we'll be turning the certain things on and off, show or hide. Now to look at all the costumes or all the different feathers, let's go up here and click costumes. And here are the different feathers, okay? Now, this doesn't, this isn't really an animation, so it uses it as costumes, or I guess you could say, if you're playing a game, it may call them skins or something like that. Uh, but there you go, they call them costumes here. If we click sounds, <laughs> it has the same turkey sound, that's funny. All right, but you see we have no code. Now, let's go and click the stage. Okay. 
we may have to choose a different background because this this one actually has our pre-made one actually has the stages being blank okay so we have it even has a sound that goes with it too but you can see so we're actually going to create kind of a different backdrop here okay or we may load one uh, yeah that may be the best thing to do we may load one think there's one on there that looks kind of like a field or something for our turkey all right so let's go ahead and let's just do our classic thing here we want it to set it up so when we kind of learn how to use the different flags so we want it to click the green flag and say our turkey say happy Thanksgiving okay so how do we do that let's start with event Let's go ahead and let's drag the flag over here that says when the green flag is clicked. And then let's go up to where it says looks. And there's one, excuse me. Yeah. That's what we want. We want looks. Because it's got our sounds. Oh, I've, I'm sorry. I have misled you. We need to click on our turkey. <laughs> so let's click on our turkey and then put the when the green flag is clicked and then go to looks and we'll drag the one that says say hello for two seconds. Drag that over there and make it fit right underneath the green flag. And instead of it saying hello, let's click there and let's type in happy Thanksgiving. Exclamation point. All right, now when we click the green flag, Turkey says Happy Thanksgiving, okay? All right, so we can do many things with this. So now that we know our code's on here, we can actually move our code around if we want to. A big indicator that we're on the right place putting the code is that we can actually see it's a little bit of a, a it's kind of transparent for where our turkey is. But let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of where it says say happy thanksgiving so let's drag this apart and how do we get rid of it we can just drag it over here let go and it'll disappear or you can right click on it and say delete block okay all right so let's go back to our handout and let's talk about giving our turkey movement okay so our big thing is we want our turkey to be able to move left and right okay using our arrow keys. One thing we need to do is we need to make sure it's in what's known as a forever loop. And this means that the computer will always be waiting for us to hit the keyboard to make the, the turkey go back and forth. So we need to add a forever. We need to add an if then, and if then, and then we're gonna put our other parts in there, okay? So let's go ahead and start off with our forever and then two if then sections. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing, hold on. All right, so we're on our turkey. We need to go to control, and we're gonna put a forever loop in there. It looks kinda of like a Pac-Man, and then we want an if-then, and we wanna put it right in there, and then we put another if-then, and if we put it right in the right place, it should open up, and then we get forever, if-then, if-then, okay? Now, if you do have any problems at any time, just realize just go ahead and move the blocks around again, okay? Because we're not having to redo code, we're just moving blocks around. All right, so if key pressed to the right is what we want. So let's go down to our operators. Oh, sorry, sensor, sensing. So key, right now it says space, but if I click the little down arrow, it will show basically most of the keys on the keyboard, I'll say that. Up, down, left, right, or there's even a, any key. Let's go ahead and let's change that to the, which one are we doing first? We are doing the right one first. So let's go ahead and we can change that to the right, and then drag that. Now, if you notice, this kind of look has a point on it, okay? A pointy double arrow, and this kind of has a pointy double arrow. 
kind of like a hexagon, okay? But it's kind of like a stretched hexagon. Now, if I drag this and I hover over that, it'll open up, okay? Key, right arrow, press, then. Now, a big thing is, at any time, we can move our turkey around, but we kind of want to have our turkey right here on the bottom, not, not too low, because it'll cut off his little feet. I'm going to have him about there, okay? All right, so let's go back to our handout. We want to change X by 10. So what exactly does that mean? So do you remember when we were talking about, we had our coordinate chart on here? So X is the left and the right, okay? So if, you want, if we have our turkey here in the middle and we want our turkey to move, okay? to the right, then we need to make sure it's positive numbers, and if we need to move to the left, we need to make sure it's negative numbers for the X. Same thing as if we want to move something up and down, which we will in a minute, then we need to do the Y. Negative is down, positive is up, okay? All right, so, oh, hang on, I clicked the wrong thing. That's funny. All right, so what we want to do is we want to, wait, so we're going to get the, uh, let me get it in the right place here. We want to get the change X by 10, okay? So the right arrow, change X by positive 10, okay? And then we're going to put in left arrow, change X by negative 10, which negative is to the left, and positive number is to the right for X. All right, so let's go to motion and let's look for change X and put it right there by positive 10. So at any time, because it's kind of waiting on us, we can actually run our code, okay? The way we do that is we just left click on our code and you'll see it'll start to gloat. That means it's active. So if I use the right arrow right now on my keyboard, oh, there you go, there goes our turkey's moving to the right, okay? Well, how do I get my turkey back? Oh no, I can't get him back, can I? And then just hit the stop button when you're done. Now you could boot, grab him and move him around. I don't wanna do that. I wanna use the keyboard to make it kind of a game, right? All right, so let's go back to our handout. And what we need to do is add the key left arrow press and this time change X by negative 10 okay all right so let's go to sensing let's change it to left arrow all right and then we want to go to motion and we need the change X to negative 10 steps okay All right, now click your code and let's try it. So to the right arrow should move him to the right, and now the left arrow should move him to the left. Okay? Hey, we already got some motion going on, don't we? All right, so I'm trying to put him back in the middle again. Do, 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 do. All right, so let's go to, and I'm gonna go ahead All right, so let's go down. Now, what we're going to do later is basically we're going to make it so that our turkey hides and we'll have a button that we click um, that will actually start our game, okay? So let's go ahead and let's add when the green flag is clicked, click hide, okay? So let's drag that over there. When the green flag is clicked, let's go to the one that says looks, and there'll be one called hide, okay? So drag that there. Now what should happen is, if we hit the stop button, if we, so if we hit the green button, our turkey should disappear for now, okay? But remember, we're gonna add that broadcast thing, so after we click a start button, it's actually going to make it appear, okay? 
So we're going to get a whole screen that basically says, you know, uh, turkey. <laughs> Let's talk turkey is what it's going to do. All right, now how do we make something come back and forth if we just need to see it? So right now our sprite's name is turkey. Here's our show on and off. Okay, right now I'm going to do show. This is our size at 100%. If you need your characters to be smaller or larger. And this also shows the coordinates where he is on the screen, which that may come in to be important later. Also, this shows the direction of your character. So if you need your character to turn, just change the degrees he's at, okay? But right now we need him to be at 90 degrees. Come on. Ah, okay. So I'll just click there and type in 90. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's go back to our handout. Ah, uh, let's see. Maybe we should go ahead. Now let's go ahead. We'll do our variables and then we'll talk about adding because we do our different our different costumes and stuff uh, that'll work out well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add our variables. Okay, then we'll talk about changing our graphics. Oh, um, hold on a second. I could actually let's see. Uh, Is that the right one? Yeah, okay. I'm actually gonna post that into the chat as well, our project, so that'll make it a little bit easier for everybody to get to it, okay? Instead of having to type it back in. I'm sorry I should have done that earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our variables. So we actually need to add some variables. So when we go and we click um, where it says make variable, we'll type in feathers, mist, and then you'll actually see that it'll appear on the screen. Um, well, score might be the easiest one to create first. Score, and then we'll make a left um, time left. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make a variable. So we got to go click here on the left side where it says variables. Let's go up where it says make a variable. It'll say, What do you want to call it? Now, what do we want to call it? Let's call the first one score. and then hit OK. And then you should see it appear on the screen. Now, if you do ever create a variable that you don't want to appear on the screen like that, you can do the uncheck box and it won't show up on the screen, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's make our next one. Let's do uh, feathers mist. So make a variable. and hit OK. Should appear right below it. All right. And the last we want to make is time left. Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll see project that just say timer on it. Now let's move that. Let's grab it and let's move it over here. So it's kind of where we want it to be. Now you can actually change if you double click, you'll get a few options there. And if you right click, it'll say normal readout, larger, and we won't talk about the slider thing. All right, so here we are, we've created our variables. So here's our variables. Now we can actually create something with our variables. So the important part is we're gonna talk about uh, setting our, our time left and then how do we actually create a timer, okay? So I may go ahead and let's talk about creating our timers first, okay? So the timer is a little bit of a trick, okay? So basically there isn't really uh, a drag over here and it's a time, uh, you know, a 10 second or, or we're doing a 60 second uh, minute timer here. There isn't really a code for that. Basically what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tell the computer to wait a second, start the uh, timer at 60, 
wait a second, okay? And then after one second, subtract one from timer left after a second. So what actually happens is that's actually a timer, okay? So if any time you do a game or anything, you're actually doing kind of like a swap where you're subtracting every second, you're subtracting a number from that number, um, which makes it look like it's a countdown timer, but it's really something in the background just subtracting numbers from uh, every second from that number, okay? So let's go ahead and let's create that. So I'm gonna drag, and I'm trying to remember, is this on, let's see, oh, okay. So let's go to where it says stage, okay? So let's click our stage, okay? Let's put our code here. So let's say set, we wanna start with, whoop, where am I? Let's set, do, yeah, we need to do set, it time left to 60. So set, and we can drag it over there. So let's do the little drop down here. And because we already made our variables, of course, here it is, time left, let's set it to 60, okay? And after we hit enter, you'll see that, well, it hasn't, it's not doing it yet. But anyway, if I click it, it'll run the code and it'll set our time to 60. And then, well, we actually, well, let's go ahead and add, we'll add feather and then we'll add score as well. But our big thing is here's our timer right here. Okay. All right, set feather to zero and set score to zero as well. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna have a repeat, okay? So let's get a repeat. Let's set it to 60. And like I said, we're not using the green flag right now because we're actually gonna have a start button. But we could add the green flag on here just to make sure everything's kind of working and stuff too if you wanted to. If I hit the, yeah, because it, it makes him disappear right now. Okay, so click the stage. Let's do our timer, okay? And we'll add a thing on the top and then we'll deal with our broadcast in just a little bit. So we've got our repeat. We want to add a wait a second on there. Okay. Wait one second and then we actually want it to change time left by one second, okay? So let's get our change. Well, we gotta go to variables. We want it to change this time. So change, so after every, so keep doing this for 60 seconds until it gets down to zero. Want it to do a minus one, okay? On the timer. Now, if I go ahead and I click on our code, which will run it, then we should see our timer working. Yeah. Okay, did you get it? So basically, it should count down all the way to zero. So basically, with our computer, it sets the time to 60. These are ignored right now. And then it'll repeat this 60 times. You could put a, you know, if you do a forever thing, it'll actually start being a negative, so we don't want that. But we tell it to wait a second, and then, because it's playing this, wait a second, minus one, wait a second, minus one, wait a second, minus one. So it looks like it's counting down, which it is, but it's really kind of a trick. and it should stop at 60 for us. And that's basically how you make a countdown timer. Now in a little bit, we're gonna add some extra stuff to it because it, to make it end the entire project, okay? All right, so let's go ahead back to our handout. Now I actually have the final code here. So let's kind of work through our code and we'll see how that works. And we'll also, we'll talk about how broadcast work works. So broadcast is what we're going to do with our button. So let's go ahead and I want to create a button and I also want to make um, some different backgrounds 
for our uh, our um uh the our project i guess is what i need to say our project okay so let's go back and let's first let's create a button okay so i'm actually going to go here let's click the cat and let's click where it says paint and i believe let me make sure i want to make sure the names are right yeah, it's just called back, um, back uh, excuse me. I think it's just called play. Yeah, okay. Once we actually do that. All right, so we're actually going to make a sprite. Let's go ahead and name it play. Okay, so this is going to be our play button. So let's do a little bit of drawing here. So let's go ahead and we want it to have a rectangle. Or want it to be a rectangle I should say this is our middle section so choose this and I want our fill to be so let it be the white right now which is a little bit boring but it'll be okay but we also want it to have a border which is what this is right now it's set to four okay all right so let's probably start about here and let's draw our rectangle okay and let's add some text so let's click our text here and we'll click there and it should let us type in and let's say play oh my oh, hang on i have to make my fill of my text black or it's a different color All right, and get right on the border there and then you can move it around you can also resize it if you want to okay hold on I want to move you around hold on there it is I'll put it right in the middle so that's what it should look like where it says play okay now now let's go to our next part so we have our play button Let's go ahead and let's create, let's go to backdrop and let's create our two backdrops. So first, let's choose our backdrop for us. Now there's actually is something, I thought it was loaded in here, but it actually is not. So there it is, there's Hayfield, never mind. Never mind, it is there. So let's click Hayfield. So there's our Hayfield right there. And this is the Hayfield, and we're actually gonna have, this. so it is called Hayfield here. So backdrop one, we want it to say something, okay? Let's go ahead and let's move. We're gonna have our turkey um, be invisible for right now. So he, he'll get him out of the way. And then we can move our play button right about there. So when we click on our backdrop and our backdrop one, we want it to say something. So let's click the text, all right? And let's just say, Turkey feather catch game. All right, so I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> so now we can see that on the screen, okay? I can move it around. Of course, we could get fancier with it and all that. Okay, hold on. Okay, I wanna, no, I don't, I want to. Mm. Okay, well, I guess I've already put it. If I do undo, aha, there we go. Okay, so I think it is in the middle but let's I want to make it um, a little bit more centered here so I'm actually going to drag it down a little bit more there we go all right so turkey feather catch game <laughs> all right now Lou we need to have our game over is that it centered mm. okay it looks a little better all right so let's make another one so let's click here and let's say paint 
and this time we're going to add where it says game over I'm going to click on it and drag it to the middle as well you would think when you're writing something it would start off in the middle but it will let you center it alright so now we should have uh, backdrop one which is turkey feather catch game have hay fields and then we also have game over okay now let's go back to our code now let's go ahead and let's talk about well, we have our graphic in the back let's see which one should we talk about next okay when we talk about broadcast that's when we'll talk about some of our other section here our, bro our broadcast as well so but let's go ahead and let's get it so our button shows up in the right place where it says play okay all right so let's go ahead and we'll do that one so let's click on our play and let's get our vent when the green flag is clicked we want it to go to the right size of 36 not minus 82 now so that's our coordinates now so we actually have our graphic and the right play I, I like where it is anyway so I'm actually gonna put I'm gonna go with whatever it says so one good trick is this if you actually have a sprite like the turkey or whatever and you actually have it instead of you having to figure out what the coordinates are when you move so look at this it says 20 minus 84 and eh, it's a little different I think our play button may be a little bit bigger okay but you'll see if I move it around the coordinates here will change but also before I copy the block it changes there too okay I think that'll be good about there so I'm gonna say go to and then I put it there all right so go to and make sure it is shown because in a little bit when we actually click the sprite what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it hide okay we're also gonna have it create a broadcast as well so we want it to show so we go to looks and we drag the one over there that says show okay now the big thing about this is and I'm gonna whoop, something. big thing about this is is when I click the green so if I have the turkey and he's seen for some reason when I click the green flag the turkey will disappear and this is shown so even if for some reason both of them or the turkeys showing if I hit the green flag it makes the button appear and the turkey disappear anytime I hit the green flag to start the game over okay all right now when we actually we want to set up click the sprite all right and we won't talk about broadcast yet uh, well we can go ahead and do that I think uh, because that'll kind of go into we talk about cloning next so then we we can talk about broadcast and go ahead and grasp that concept okay so let's go back up here so broadcast is a message that is sent throughout the scratch program activating scripts with the matching hat blocks so we can actually give it a, a, a number or I mean excuse me your name broadcasts are sent with the blocks broadcast and it talks about the other one another one is wait okay so basically it allows you to have it instead of it just being a one sprite or just having it where the green flag is clicked it allows you to set it up so if you do have a button that you want to click and it activate on other scripts it allows you to do that okay alright so let's go back down to our code so we actually want it to broadcast play okay that's what we want it to do so when we click the sprite the play button let's click on there so when we click the sprite the play button let's make this a little bigger here so let's go to we have when you click the sprite 
Okay, well, let's go to broadcast. See what it says broadcast. All right now we have um, new and message, but we actually need to create our own. So let's see, where do I mm, try to remember here? I think I just do it right there. Yeah, new message. Okay, so drag broadcast over here. And let's click here and we're going to say new message. We're going to say what's your message and we're going to say play. Okay. Now, when we actually have this one here that says message, so when you click this, it's going to broadcast play to anything that has broadcast on it. Okay. So when received the message play, that means that something that the, the game can begin and other things will switch around here in just a minute. So there's our play. We want to make sure, is that on the screen? Let's see. I don't think that's on the screen. Oh, duh. It'll actually hide the play button. <laughs> okay, so we need to go to hide. So when we click this, it will hide our play button, okay? So how do we start our game over? We click the green flag, brings back the play button, and when we click play, it'll start the broadcast and make itself disappear, okay? Now we're done with play, all right? And we've created a broadcast. So now let's go on and let's go, let's do our stage setting because that's the, the best one. And then we'll start talking about our flags falling from the, the sky area, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and do this part. So let's click the stage. All right, and we did already create this part. And remember I said we were gonna make a broadcast. So our first broadcast is we actually want it to be when the green flag is clicked, we want it to show uh, the first one that, not the one that says game over, hang on, I want to make sure that I'm accurate with that. So there, there are two, hang on, I might need to rename one of those, so hang on. Okay, I'm not going to do that because I think that's, that's uh, named properly what we have done. Okay, all right, so when the green flag is clicked, what do we want it to do? We want it to switch to a different backdrop. Which backdrop do we want us to the, the, it to switch to? We want it to switch to, we're going to make it backdrop one because we want to make sure it says turder, uh, turkey, <laughs> turder, uh, turkey feather catch game. Okay, so let's go to looks and let's do change. Where is it? Switch backdrop. Why does it say wait? That's interesting. Switch backdrop and that's actually one. So we're going to make it one, which that makes sense. So when I click the backdrop, it should be set to turkey feather catch game. All right. I know it says two, but let's just we'll ignore that for now. One makes more sense. Okay. So Let's go ahead and let's create this part. So we have our first broadcast that is going out here. So when you click the play button, we want it to re be received. So let's click the received, say backdrop. Oh, no, hang on. We want to do, um, where is it? Broadcast. When I receive play, meaning broadcast play, what I want it to do, I want it to switch to the hay field. All right, so looks, switch backdrop to hay field. And then basically it connects up with our, our settings that are on there. Okay. Now, I guess if, um, hmm.
can see something. Okay, so we're going to keep going. I, I think one of the things that's interesting is that we could actually have it. I didn't mean to close that. We could actually have it so that it doesn't show score feathers missed and time left, but we'll work on that in a minute. All right, so we drag that there, and our next one, we want to add our broadcast. Okay, so when we're going to have a different broadcast is done. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have it uh, broadcast to everything else that it's done. Okay, and then when that happens, that's when the game's actually going to switch uh, the uh, background to tell us that the game is over. Okay. All right, so we need to go to our broadcast. Oh, where is it? All right, so broadcast. And we're going to make a new broadcast called done. Oh, need to click there. All right, done. And we want it to switch to the back, back, backdrop number two. Okay. So then that'll be where it says game over. Okay. And then stop all. And that means that it'll stop the timer. It'll stop the clocks. It'll also stop when we have our clone feathers coming from the sky. Okay. stop all okay now let's go ahead and let's work on our feathers so let well we can go ahead and see what we have now so far all right so so far we click the green flag okay it'll make sure it's on this one here we hit the play button it changes the background okay Right now, you know, we don't have it where it does the turkey because it's not being broadcast yet, but we will in just a second. And also, our, our timer starts right there, doesn't it? All right, so let's go back. So we have the background set, okay? Now, let's talk about our turkey, and then we'll finish up with our feathers, okay? We'll talk turkey. So let's talk turkey. All right. So when received, done, which is the one that we created here. Okay. When the countdown timer has finished, it'll go down to the next section. So then the 60 seconds are up. It'll go here. And it'll broadcast the word done and switch to the game over uh, um, background that we created. Okay. which is the number three, okay? All right, so let's go to, wait, hang on. Yeah, so we did all that. Da, 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 da. All right, so when the minute's up, it'll actually switch that, say stop all, and then switch to the game over backdrop. Sorry, just checking there. Okay, so we created our done. So we also have our play, okay? This is one of the things that you wanna do is that the game will, if you have a timer, you can set it up so when you click the green flag, but a lot of the time you actually do want to have it so that it all starts at the same time, okay? But this allows us to have a little bit of an intro, okay? So if we go to, let's make a receive the play from the broadcast. So let's do the turkey. Let's see. When I receive, whoop, when I receive play, when I receive play, show the turkey, and then it activates the buttons, okay? So looks, show, 
All right, now let's try that out. So we hit the green flag. It, it turns to turkey feather catch game. I hit play. Then my left and right, my turkey shows up and my left and right arrows are working, okay? All right. Now, oh, when I receive done, hides, so we need to do that. So when I receive done, hide, boom. So when our countdown comes to zero, it'll broadcast done, and then our turkey will disappear, and our background will change to game over, okay? And it'll stop everything. All right, now let's go ahead and let's talk about our feathers, okay? Now that we've talked about our broadcast, we've set that up, we've set up our turkeys, now we have our feathers set up and everything as well, okay? All right, so let's click on, on our feathers. Now remember we have different feathers here. Some of them are a little, little higher than the rest, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why, but anyway. So we're in our feathers. First thing we want to set up is when I receive the play, hide. And the reason that is, is because we actually want them to appear, okay, in certain random areas, okay? So we're actually going to have it kind of jump around in different places. And at certain times, we're going to have it move down the screen and then when it randomly and then when it touches the bottom of the screen um, it will disappear okay so when it gets to a certain position okay so when the turkey is touching it needs to play the sound okay and when the turkey the turkey okay so let's walk through this <laughs> so uh, when we actually get we set it up our feathers through go moving back and forth but they only appear at certain times, okay, after a certain random place on the on the upper area, and it's going to pick a random feather at the same time. Then it will show one of the feathers, which these are going to make clones, like I said, and then it's going to go down. It's going to repeat this until it hits a Y position of minus 180, which is the bottom of the screen. Okay, so when it hits the bottom of the screen, what will happen? it'll actually go and move to a different position randomly, okay? And then it'll actually keep going down, and if it touches the, but if it touches the turkey, then it'll actually play a turkey sound and add a one to the score, okay? And the clone will disappear. And then it'll actually change, but if, if this area happens, if it doesn't, repeat doing the, these things, keep falling from the sky. If this part gets uh, interrupted by actually touching a turkey, um, um, then, then it will go into this, add the sound, uh, make itself disappear. But the feather keeps going down, doesn't touch the turkey, then it actually will change the feather mist. It's still gonna touch the bottom and disappear, but it's gonna have a feather mist um, by one. Okay, and then it'll delete the clone because it will not have touched the turkey. It's kind of our goal. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and let's set this up. Okay, and we're also going to make it do a clone. Okay, forever creating a clone, um, kind of in a random, uh, random number here. Okay, within a few seconds. So this controls how many there are. So let's say you wanted to make it harder or easier, you could have more or less. So we're going to make it choose randomly how many how many feathers will be on the screen basically at a certain time is what this will do. Okay. Now if you didn't do this, if you didn't make it random, then it will be very kind of easy to guess where it is. This also picks where it will be on the Y axis um, on the excuse me on the X axis on the top and the 180 tells it it's at the top one negative 180 is on the bottom. Okay. All right, so let's keep, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and make our 
um, appearance <laughs> happen here and then we'll actually have our clone start uh, here and actually sw um, switch in our costumes as well so we're going to use the pick random uh, a few times on here one two three three times on here okay all right so we've got our feather let's go to and we actually will not have to know the names because we're just telling it the next or choose a random one of those okay so first we want to do is we want to set it up to do the broadcast so when I receive the play all right controls let's see oh I'm sorry I always these two I don't know if it's the colors are so close together but I always do that a lot so when I receive hit of the play button then hide okay now if I don't hide uh, let's see what will happen if I don't hide uh, we might play around with that a little bit later but let's go ahead and let's do it just like we have there hide forever meaning it's just gonna wait that's all that forever means that means the computer is just gonna wait until something happens and it's gonna keep repeating it repeating it repeating it waiting for something to happen so wait a few seconds then to create a clone of myself okay so we want wait seconds all right so if we go to wait where's my events uh, where is it? yeah wait all right create a clone of myself where is it create a clone of myself okay so let's kind of play around with that for a second. <laughs> now we haven't given it instructions now, have we? All right, so if we click that. Oh, so it really is doing it because it's the same thing. Okay, so let's I'm just mess around with that. Okay, so we have it so it's on hide okay because remember this is controlling how many times that we'll see it or controlling uh, it popping up so let's pick let's do our random and our random is 0.5 to 3 seconds so operators pick random and all we do is we drag it and we hold, hold it over there and it'll pop right in there so 0.5 to three seconds so that just tells us how often our uh, clones gonna show up okay all right so let's talk about our big one here we'll go ahead and create this one and then we'll talk about our last big code for our game all right so we need a broadcast uh, done remember with the countdown clock is what we're looking for want it to hide the feathers just like we did with the turkey all right so where is it under events so when I receive done we want it to hide okay all right now let's go ahead and start working on this so when I start a clone When I start a clone, we want the the uh, the feather to end up on the y axis, excuse me, the x axis at the top um, randomly, but we also want it to be on 180, which is the very very top of the y axis. So that means it'll be this part of the screen at any interval here on the x. Remember the x is left and right. Y is up and down. Okay, so go to choose one that says go to X and Y. So we need. Oh, hang on. Motion should be. Go to X 
and Y, and we want to go to random. All right, and we're going to make the Y 180 because that'll be the very top. If I click that, it should, yep, it's already up there. See, it put it up there. And we want it to randomly choose. So the, the, the sides here and the sides over there. So 240 is the left and 240 is the right. Okay. If we look at our chart, so if we grab here, I can I can mess around with that. So if we grab it over here and drag it, you'll see what does it say? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It says 230. Can I even get it over to two? Is it 240? I guess it's so it's completely off the screen or whatever. I'll put it over here. It'll be like this, I guess. I don't know. We can mess around with that. But the big thing that is the 180s up there. All right, so we'll make it minus 240 and 240. Okay, now when we click it, we can see a little bit of the feather right there. We should see the feather randomly choose. Do you see that? Now it's here. Now it's there, now it's there. It'll randomly choose where to show up, okay? All right, now let's talk about it switching costumes, okay? Now you could actually just set it up so it just goes to the next costume, but let's see, is it switch? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, let's see. Is that yeah that should be yeah that should be it just when it says switch costume all right so then I should be able to put there you go and it is one through five yeah because there's five so if we go to costumes it's one two three four five so one through five pick random so switch costume, pick random. So if we, here, I'll put this in the middle here. So we click it. It's choosing the costume, the costume randomly. And it's also cho choosing the, the um, X axes randomly as well, okay? I'll put the 180 back. And then we run it, it'll be up there. Some of those feathers are a little bit further down, which is kind of interesting when you look in the costume section. Okay, so we want to make sure it says show because we also have one that says hide as well, don't we? So this is just to make sure. Show. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about our repeat and making it move down the screen, okay? The easy way to make something move down the screen is basically you keep having it change its position, okay? So it starts off with the Y position and then we want it to keep moving down, don't we, okay? So repeat until, so we'll do this one, okay? And then we'll make sure that our feathers are working and then we'll, we'll add this in there and then you'll get to kind of get how that, um, get the feel of how that kind of connects, okay? So repeat until. So repeat, it's a lot different, it's, it's similar to an if, okay? Repeat until, there it is, repeat until. So it's like giving something a forever right but then if something else happens which we put in there then it'll stop or whatever all right so like I said we're gonna skip this part right now so repeat until so we need to add a less than meaning it'll actually start off and keep moving down okay so we're focusing on the Y position meaning 
the, the, um, the above, okay? So keep moving less and less and less and less until it get, reaches the bottom. Okay, so let's get our operator, our less than, where is it? There it is. Less than, and we want to get the y. The y position, and we'll change this to minus 180. Okay. Now, let's see. Okay, we should be able to play around with that already. Let's see. All right, so let's see what I do wrong. See, y position minus 180, uh, less than 180. I guess I do have to put something there to make it uh, continuously go down. Ah, because I wanted to go ahead and show it moving down. All right, so let's go ahead and add the change uh, feathers missed by one. Let's see, and then delete the clone because that's when it should touch the bottom, okay? Let's do our variable, change, feathered miss by one, because remember that's counting up. And then we want it to have, let's see, here's create the clone, uh, delete the clone. Let's see, I thought that it would go ahead and start moving down. Hmm. Okay, so change Y by random. Oh, this is what does it, duh. The Y position is less than 180, but then when it reaches, I guess it means it reaches the, the minus 180, that's when it should destroy itself. Okay, change Y by Okay, now we're now we're getting it here. Okay, so we need it to let's see where it is. Wait, which one is it? It's blue. All right, motion change y. Change y. Let's see. I want to do it. Oh, okay. So. Pick random minus four to minus six. So this actually should change the speed. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Pick random. Let's see. Minus four. Minus six. Okay. Now. There we go. It touches the bottom, it should. Oh, can I do it again? And it's counting up on the clock. Well, let's see. Oh! <laughs> I don't have this going on and this. There we go. So that should take care of that. Both of those need to work together. There we go. Why did the blue one disappear? There, if I hit stop. Okay, now, let's see. They should all disappear now. Mm. Show, hide, be random, go to, there we go, option, show, delete this clone, repeat until minus 180, huh, 
we'll have to see why that one's not disappearing. Okay, so now we have them falling. We also have our counter that's set up right there too. Does that reset when I hit the play? Yeah, good, okay, it does. Okay, so. So right now, as you see, touching the turkey means nothing. And let's see it count down. <laughs> touching the turkey doesn't mean anything. All right, got 30 seconds left. It's interesting because when I clicked those two, then there was always one that just kind of stayed there. And I guess the full play starts it right at the right time before it can, so it knows to delete. All right. So we got eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And there you go. Perfect. So remember, we had it set up. So we actually had the code reach here, and then when it reached zero, I mean, it did this 60 times. And then it reached zero, it, it broadcast done, okay? And then it switched to game over, and it stopped all, okay? All right, now, to go, hit play, I'm going to hit stop. Let's go back to our feathers and let's finish our code here. Okay, now we're actually going to have it so that something if, if, the, we have a sensing one, if the turkey, if it's touch, meaning the feather touches a turkey, then do these things. Okay, so if, so let's add an if then. Right. So make sure it's inside the repeat until. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So repeat until touching turkey. And that's under sensing. Okay, so if we go to touching, we can set it up touching color as well, also distance from the mouse, but touching, we'll change it from mouse to turkey. Okay, then what's it gonna do? We want it to play the turkey song, gobble gobble, don't we? Okay, so if we drag sound in there, we have it start, play the turkey gobble sound. All right, and then change score by one. Let's see. Change score by one, okay. And then we do want to delete the clone because we want it to disappear, okay? So once the feather touches the turkey, then we definitely want it to be over, don't we? All right. And where's my cling thing? There it is. Delete the cling. Okay, now I think our game is ready. So have we learned a lot? Yes, we have. All right, so let's do it full screen. And what should happen is everything, there we go. And the play is a little crooked, but I can take care of that. And also, we actually have these things visible. And let me fix that real quick. So if we actually go to here, what we can do, let's see. So, hmm. Okay, so if I have the green flag, if I do green flag 
is clicked on, I need to have the variables hidden. So I'll do hide, I'll do it in order, hide score, hide feather, and then hide time left. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked, hide all of those. Then when they'll hit the play button, it'll change the background and I'll also will have a show on here and then that should have take care of that. I might have to do it to all of them, which should be can be annoying. Let's see. I can't do a show. Okay, I guess I have to do variable show. Okay, so I'll have to do that for all of them. Okay, score, show, missing feathers missed, and show the timer. Okay, now I'm actually going to move this. Whoop, hold on. Uh, the funny thing is I've had it where um, you try to do <laughs> move certain ones around and stuff and the funny thing about it is that now that I've set this for click um, then I can't move the the, um, the the thing around anymore so I actually have to undo this and then I can drag it over and then put it back and then it'll work so all right, so now we have it so that those are hidden. So if I hit the green flag, those should be hidden. The only thing it should say is turkey. Oh shoot, the, uh, okay, so I'd actually have to do, sorry. I actually have to do this and when I have it go to. So I actually want it, let's see, 26. I want it to be minus 10. Let's see, minus 10, minus 89 minus 10 and then minus 89 I think would do well okay all right so now I'm gonna go back we hit the green oh no <laughs> that's hilarious okay what did I do wrong so that wants to be See, that's why I always wanted to have it so oh I didn't do the minus is that the deal yeah I didn't do minus 89 okay now let's add that back let's see it full screen green flag boom there we go now it's in the right place now let's go ahead and we should be good to go so let's hit play and there's our turkey oh no we're missing the feathers so there he goes, missing the feathers. We know that's working. Our clock is working, and let's see if we can catch a feather. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, we got 35 seconds. seconds 18 seconds oh, come on come on come on I will tell you one of the things that's interesting is that setting this up to be random then it does make it harder in certain plays through to get a high score because you know oh, two seconds one second oh game over there you go right there and it leaves the score on the screen is what I wanted so when the game's over you can see um, how many feathers you missed what your score is and then see who can you know have the the best score from your game okay all right so we have covered a lot haven't we okay so 
basically, this is just kind of a fun, trying to get more advanced than us maybe just doing like a the feather dance, um, you know, the monster dance, or just even the, the ghoul ghost game that we created, you know, before, and trying to get, um, I guess you'd say, fancier than that. Of course, you could add more graphics to it, of course. You know, I just kind of left uh, this part pretty, you know, plain. And of course, just keep your <laughs> con controls and stuff. There's ways that you can actually control the turkey with the mouse if you want to. You could also add more turkey noises and randomize the turkey so some people hear the same noise and might get annoying in some way. We'll just change what the noise is. Remember, you can record your own voice, so maybe make it a fun turkey noise. <laughs> kind of thing would work out. <laughs> All right, so, oh no, I missed it. But it's a fun thing to do. Imagining making a mess and kind of like letting family play it on Thanksgiving Day or something. Oh, there we go. Game over, and you can see who gets the highest score. Okay. Which is the point of some games, right? Who can get the highest score, um, you know, on the game? <laughs> who can outdo the other person and get the highest score? Okay, so we've actually come to the end of our class here. And uh, I want to go ahead and kind of point out uh, some of the other resources that I actually have listed. So we have the full game, of course, in the handout there. And hopefully you enjoyed that, us covering that. I know I did. I hope you did. So if you do go and want some more tutorials, uh, getting started with Scratch tutorials, are there available? And also the Explore uh, section is there as well. So if you do go to the main scratch page. You can actually click where you can click down here too, but if you click explore, you know, there's all kinds of neat games. And if you are looking for something, maybe even a Thanksgiving theme, then type up here, maybe Turkey or something where it says search. And it'll pull up all kinds of silly stuff and they're all free, just click them. And it's kind of a fun uh, thing to do. The really cool part about it is you can click um, where I showed you earlier, uh, clicking on see the project, and also you can do the remix uh, for it too. So that allows you to uh, not only edit the, edit, you can see the code on the inside of it, and you know maybe even make your code better as well, but you can also change, update, and uh, repost and say that you, you know, you improve the game in some way. So. A lot of fun remixes out there too, and it will have your uh, name on it if you sign in and everything. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we're coming to the end of our class here. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time too. I'll go ahead and, uh, of course, have some other resources here in our handout, things like how to make a Mario game, some Star Wars stuff on there, uh, some top five uh, uh, games that have been created using Scratch, learning code, uh, Kane Academy, uh, Code Academy, all kinds of great places to go and learn code. All right, so any any final questions? All right, well we have covered a lot this afternoon. Uh, come join me tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, we'll be doing our Let's Draw and Animate a Turkey. So we're going to delve more into using Scratch with our vectors and drawing and doing some little bit of animation and stuff. And we're going to try, I'm trying to do the, the voice capture on there. I know I'm using a microphone, so I may have to use a pre-recorded voice, but of our gobble kind of thing. So, so that should be a lot of fun, kind of like a Thanksgiving Day card, maybe may animate it a little bit too. 
And then in the afternoon, we're going to be doing internet shopping and digital couponing. We'll be talking about Black Friday savings and also Cyber Monday stuff. And uh, we cover a lot of that, clock, that class, digital deals, um, apps, all kinds of stuff. And then on the 19th, we're going to be doing Let's Make a Turkey Feather Catch Game once again. So join me for that. Uh, may, may push this a little bit more uh, to do it or we may set it up uh, so it's kind of a little bit different. Maybe we might have a few other. I'm getting some ideas in my mind of other things that we can add to uh, this as well. So come join me for that. Like I said, every time I teach something, I feel like I get better um, the, the next time I teach it too. All right, and then tomorrow afternoon we'll be doing, excuse me, Thursday afternoon we'll be the holiday uh, gadget and gift ideas. So come join me for that. And uh, we'll cover a lot of things uh, for that. We'll talk about what things are really hot this this um, year. Um, buying guides is a really good one. And I ask me lots of great questions and stuff like that. Next week, we're only going to be doing two uh, days of classes because Thanksgiving is on Thursday. So Tuesday, we'll be doing eBay and Facebook Marketplace, Internet buying and selling. Maybe you're thinking about some holiday uh, presents for somebody, Christmas or the holidays and everything. And then on the 25th, we'll be doing Thanksgiving Day. We'll be doing Let's Make a Feather Catch Game again. And then on the afternoon, we'll be doing Let's Draw and Animate a Turkey. So we'll be doing both our classes back to back because it's the day before Thanksgiving. So come join me for those. It's going to be a lot of fun. On a side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holtz Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for more information. Or, of course, come to the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. Remember, we're having the subscribe drive, so if we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we can get our own customized YouTube address. Or search, for, search YouTube for GCHRL videos. That's the name of our channel and join us then, okay? Well, this is a fun class. Hope you learned something new. Share with friends or family. Stay safe. I know it's getting darker uh, soon and everything, so maybe we need to start thinking more about holiday decorating and stuff like that and stay positive and everything. So stay safe. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great Tuesday. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.